What are the best early game strategies to help you get a foothold into building a base, acquiring guns, or just having fun? Well, let's go through some of my favourites and find out. And for all the ones I couldn't cover, please head down into the comments and post your favourite strategy to help others. Hey guys, Jafai here and let's get started. One safe and fun way to get started is by heading to the outpost for farming. Using a rock, paddle or torch, we can knock down the road sign surrounding and inside the outpost. Each sign drops one road sign and one metal pipe. We can recycle these components for 10 scrap and 2 high quality metal per sign. With the scrap, head to the resource vending machine and purchase metal fragments. Then at the outpost static workbench, we can craft a nail gun and nails. With the nail gun, we can enter the tunnel and fight dweller scientists for scrap, components and underground crates. Otherwise, just head off with your newly built nail gun. Gather 150 scrap by either hitting some barrels and recycling the resources at the outpost, or by destroying 15 road signs surrounding the outpost and recycling the resources there. With the scrap, head out back and you can acquire a jackhammer. This will considerably speed up our farming potential, and get us on our way to quickly build a base. I got all this wood without hitting a single tree. With your newly acquired jackhammer from the previous tip, harvest some stone rocks, preferably three. Head back to the outpost and enter the resource exchange trader. Here we can transfer our three stone rocks directly into 10,000 wood. If you're looking for the absolute safest way to obtain a large number of scrap and keycards, look no further than fishing within the fishing village. Complete the Tackle the Day mission to get a free fishing rod and bait. Head over to the fisherman and start the first quest. Find the tackle box on your map. Collect its components. And return it to the fisherman. We'll now be gifted a fishing rod and some bait. Start fishing and upgrade your bait level to start collecting sharks for scrap and salmon for a 20% chance at a blue keycard when gutting them. When ready to leave, sell your sharks at the vending machine or upgrade to a red keycard at a monument like water treatment using our blue keycard. Check out my mission and fishing guide video for more details. While others may be focused on collecting scrap, it might be best for you to focus on finding and securing an excellent building location. It takes barely any time or resources to slap a basic 1x2 down and save yourself from having someone else take your perfect spot. Start by spawning in and looking at your map. Locate a build spot that fits well with your playstyle. A large open field for expansion, close to monuments for loot and action, isolation for security, or a combination of everything. You won't know until you see it for yourself, so start traveling and keep an eye out for resourceful and secluded locations that give you an advantage over your enemies. Avoid locations that allow the enemy to easily door camp or look down onto your base. Don't build on ice lakes or extremely flat and open locations unless you like your house location being taken by a clan. For a peaceful experience, grab yourself a pair of flippers or a boat from the fishing village. Either purchase a boat at the trader, or complete the go fish mission from the fisherman to get a free kayak and paddle. Now head out to the ocean to start farming barrels. Out here we can stock up on components, tools and resources from the barrels and toolboxes. It's like farming the roads but with fewer people, making it safer. If you have a diving tank, you can head underwater to start collecting the sunken shipwrecks and rock formations loot. They can be found under the floating bottle. Be careful as there are sharks that circle the area. Road farming is an unavoidable task that everyone will eventually do. However, many people will only take the time to hit a few barrels. If you remain focused and collect every single barrel and crate, you can be up for a load of components and resources by the end of your trip. If you plan on doing this, I would highly recommend drinking some scrap tea. The three tiers will boost the scrap you collect from these barrels, making it even that much more worth it. Be careful as you'll likely encounter a few other players, so it's best to bring a ranged weapon 
or primitive gun. You can even use junk piles as a way to bait players over it and get easy kills as they're stuck looting a crate. If you're looking for speed, gambling could be the fastest way to get thousands of scrap if you're lucky. The roulette wheel at the bandit camp has 5 tiers, with the highest offering 20 times the starting value. Put in some scrap and you could walk out with thousands more. But remember, you'll likely walk out disappointed. If playing on a server with hundreds of other players is overwhelming, try a creative server or run your own locally. You'll have the freedom to experiment and learn about the game mechanics, test taking over a monument or building a certain base without wasting time or resources. Playing offline is a great way to learn and progress. Jumping into combans can be easy if you know what you're doing. A few ways include climbing over with a ladder and bandages, building over if they messed up the TC range, or flying in with a minicopter or balloon. If you see smoke from a furnace in the compound, there are resources waiting to be taken. Once inside, take resources from outside dump crates and the large furnaces that were left running. Keep the wood inside as to not alert the homeowners. A trap base can be a lot of fun or absolute hell, depending on if you're the trapper or the trapped. A well-built trap base can reap you plenty of resources for doing nothing. The trick is to stay ahead of the curve and build a convincing trap base that other players haven't seen before. Try shotgun traps, baiting people by shooting which makes it seem like an active raid, or making it look like you're a noob. If you're stuck for ideas, search for rust trap bases for an overload of different designs to try out. Horses drop 10 dung per hour, which can be composted into 10 fertilizer per dung. Use the fertilizer for farming or sell it at the bandit camp for 3 scrap per 2 fertilizer. Unfortunately, we can't sell it all at once as the trader has a cooldown after selling around 186 fertilizer. A single horse produces 150 scrap worth of dung per hour. Scale up to 7 horses to produce a theoretical 1000 scrap worth of dung per hour. You'll also need to account for the cost of feeding them, which is best done by purchasing pickles for scrap at the bandit camp. Each horse will cost 75 scrap for a saddle at one of the stables, or 525 scrap for 7 horses worth. Hemp farming can be extremely profitable on larger scales. Sell it at your own vending machine for resources, or at the bandit camp for 10 scrap per 80 cloth. I'd recommend booting your hemp farm in a modular way. Start small and expand horizontally or vertically as you get more resources. I have a full dedicated video on farming, but it's important to remember to build near a water source, as you'll need a lot of water and electricity to power the deployables you need to sustain the farm. Also, you're going to need a large amount of fertilizer to keep your plants happy. When looking at getting fertilizer, horse dung is by far the best so make sure to leave yourself some room for a horse stable to collect their dung to place within a composter. An event goblin takes every opportunity to loot or participate in events like airdrops. Don't be discouraged by geared players or clans. I can't tell you how many times there's been an airdrop in the middle of a populated area and not a single person bothered to go for it. Take the chance and you can get guns, tools, armor, ammo and resources. The Chunok crate is similar to the airdrop, but we must account for the 15 minute timer. All you can do is sit and wait. Wait a few seconds after it opens to see if anyone is watching. Grenades are also a good item to bring as you can throw them down as they're looting. Taking cargo may be a little more difficult, but if you have a boat, you can at least get on. With a bow, arrows and bandages, you can take it slowly, killing one scientist at a time. Loot their bodies and the crates below and you can quickly get yourself a capable gun to defend the ship. If you manage to capture the ship and start the timers on the locked crates, your main goal should be to stop any other players from reaching the ship while you wait, so stand guard on the towers or the sides to shoot at anyone coming near. And that's it. Thanks guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.